Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. make it a win so we're gonna make it a win and we're gonna make this a podcast ladies and gentlemen it's the wrestling mayhem show episode 536 tuesdays we've been getting together over the internet or in person to talk about professional wrestling and our passion for the sport that is completely a real sport and i still believe damn it this is gonna be an all kayfabe podcast <laughs> I can't even say it with a straight face. <laughs> Sorg, what's kayfabe? I want to do that sometime. Let's do that sometime. <laughs> this is a great idea over on the We Watch Wrestling. I'm already plugging another podcast in ours. I like they have just an entire thread where you just you have to kayfabe and believe everything, and and it's it's amazing. Well, the uh, non-believers all with me tonight, and that includes, of course, the Riz here in the Greater Pittsburgh area, and my road trip buddy Sorg. for Chikara King of Trios. You can check that out on the Indie Mayhem Show feed and WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Sorg, did you have fun? I had a blast, Riz. I have fun. <laughs> Wrestling is fun. Wrestling is fun, and road trips are fun yeah. with Riz. Also with us, he's back home. He was in the studio. Uh, it was, we went opposite ways, apparently. I came back to Pittsburgh from the east as he was uh, going up back to Poughkeepsie, New York. He is the only one on the crew with a future endeavor letter from uh, World Wrestling Entertainment and wants to tell us all about, later in the show, Texas wrestling and why you should, too. He is mad. Mike. Hi, Sorg. I, 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 I think you zigged when I zagged this week. I think that's what happened. You zigged at least when I zagged. At least we didn't. No, no, Riz, no. No. I mean, and, like just and, going like, no, like, no, no. If New Day is not allowed to do it, we are not allowed to do it either. <laughs> so I just what, realized what the video has been on me the whole time, so no one got that gag. Yeah, good. That's that's great. Right. Riz was making it. Riz was making one of these kind of jokes. No, I, no. Ah, ah, ah. Ah, 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 ah. Also with us, he is in Dallas, Texas. He is the voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling. And, uh, geez, somebody dropped your name this weekend. I can't remember who it was now. That's going to bother me and probably you more so. He oh, is God, Eamon, that, that makes you scared. He is Eamon Payton of Inspire Pro Wrestling. Eamon2, please, on the Twitter. How you doing, sir? Hi. Uh, you can see my beautiful face now. Uh, it's not moving, but that's okay. Um, but all you have to do is hear my voice. It's really, that's all people hear that I do. For Inspire Pro. I can't form sentences. Whatever. That's fine. The internet's helping you up and filling those gaps. But this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. It's at WrestlingMayhemShow.com where you can subscribe to this show on Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, iTunes, Google Play Podcast, and the video versions on our Facebook page or over on the YouTube where we are live. We are live. We are using the YouTube chat because another one bites the dust as far as our chat rooms on WordPress. And you can join us every Tuesday right there. If you subscribe, you'll get the little notification probably on your phone. But you can also go to live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com and join us. Become part of the chat room. Um, everybody's in the chat room, but they're apparently more interested in the Pirates game going on right now. Okay, that's fine, I guess. Not anymore. Uh, nope, nope, not anymore, apparently. Not anymore. Uh, but it's you can also drop us a line. Let us know what you think about baseball or preferably professional wrestling for this show. 412-206-WMS0 or that email address. Good times. Good times. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Uh, you can also uh, da, 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 support the show, share the show, tell friends about the show, join the conversation on the show at Mayhem Show on the Twitter or the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group that has been so great lately. And you can also join us on That Is The Wrong Patreon page. That's for another show we do around here. You can also join us at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Become one of our great, great Patreons, including longtime Patreon supporter, Bo Diggity! Woo! Alexander Cards, the Jennifer and Matthew Carlin's uh, uh, Foundation for Podcast Betterment. Um, I said Alex Cards, Ed Burke, and Bobby F. J. Town. That number doesn't work yeah, out. One of the, Garza. 
Antonio Garza. And, and no, 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 not Antonio Garza anymore. He's taking a break. Oh. It's okay. He's taking a break. Oh. I wasn't going to bring attention oh. to it, so I'm just going to add another plug for the WrestlingRevolution.com. What the, what the hell, Garza? <laughs> we had no, 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 no. We, we don't, don't, don't. No, it's fine. We had to talk what about it. What the hell, we, there's no, there's no heat. There's no heat between us and Antonio Garza. I'm sure he's out there he, listening. No, no. He's a longtime Sword. supporter of the there show. I, of I, I, there's no he heat. There is no heat. We, plate, no, 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 no. Sir. Your plate. There's Therefore, Sorg, I know what's going to happen. My he's, theoretical money. No, no, Riz, Riz. I know what's going to happen. He is going to return in a month as Antonio Garza, Garza Dark. That's what that's what that's what's gonna happen. That's what's gonna happen. I can tell. I can tell already. I can see the wheels moving. I can see the Hot winds wheels? of change. I can see Wade Barrett. I can see Hot Wheels. I can see everything. Can you guys tell that Lucha Underground's coming back this week? Because I know I could. <laughs> Uh, but anyways, let's get into pro wrestling. I think the big news for this week. Hey, there's a pay-per-view this weekend. The first, oh shit, there's a pay-per-view this weekend of the new era and our new pay-per-view schedule. Right? Because you're going to, after next week, say, oh shit, there's another pay-per-view in two weeks. Uh, I'm not ready. Sport, we're going to talk backlash? Backlash? We're going to talk backlash? Joey so we Styles. Should that guy we, yeah. we, should, we should talk some backlash. We should talk yeah, some backlash. We back saw backlash. that guy, by the way. Yeah, yeah, That's there's that guy. <laughs> Hi, Joey Styles. Um, but anyways, um, uh, by the way, uh, uh, shout out. Listen to the Deep Blue Something podcast. I don't know if the episode is out from King of Trios. Uh, great story there, actually, about um, uh, Joey Styles and the doctor that they use at Chikara. has a really cool uh, connection to WWE, actually, uh, that I think you might be interested and want to get a new mm-hmm. doctor, apparently. Uh, but anyways, uh, let's talk about backlash. A lot happened on SmackDown. I did happen. I was at a, I was at a foodie event this 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 evening doing some video work. Uh, so I came in a little bit late, missed the first hour of of, of uh, SmackDown. But it seems like it's okay from what everything I'm reading. Uh, but uh, didn't miss much, Sorg. So this is our didn't first. Didn't miss much in that first hour. This is our first um, return pay per view. We haven't had what, what was it 2003? I think. Was the last backlash? You know what we should do? No, well, no, like 2006 or 7? I think 8. 2008. You know what? Keep talking. I have the network up. There's also Wikipedia. Sorry. There's also Wikipedia. Um, I was going to say, we all have computers. I we feel like, on them. I feel as though watch parties for the last backlash, the okay. last clash of the ta- champions. And the last no mercy needs to happen in the near, in the next few weeks. The the last backlash two thousand nine. Two thousand nine. Okay, that's not bad. Okay, two thousand nine. Makes sense. Makes sense. That's when Big Show threw John Cena through a uh, a giant light. Oh jeez. Oh jeez. Mm-hmm. And you wonder why we got rid of backlash. Um. By the way, uh, the other matches because I, I feel like now we have to talk about no, this. We have to. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I, I believe this was the first match in their 11,000 series of matches. Uh, the dark match was Kofi Kingston beating Dolph Ziggler. <laughs> that, yeah. huh. Oh, no. Oh, no. There's something on here that is still current and could possibly happen within a month. Jeff Hardy defeated Matt Hardy in an I Quit match. <laughs> oh, no. God damn it. <laughs> One of, some things changed and some things stay the same. You wanna then, know something no. you wanna know something that changed? Um the legacy oh. of Randy Orton, Cody Rhodes, and Ted DiBiase beat Triple H, Batista, and Shane McMahon. Uh, wow. And your sole survivor, Randy Orton. Who yeah, told us the was, story it was tonight the match on where anyone could make the pin to become the champion. Um, let's see. We also had, oh, we had, we had a singles match for the title of Miss WrestleMania. Uh, Santina. Santina beat Beth Phoenix. With, with Beth Phoenix had Rosa Mendez in her corner. That might be the last time Rosa was on pay-per-view. Okay. Okay. Uh, Uh, Hashtag hashtag women's evolution. (laughs) (laughs) Um, we, we did have one really good match on this show though. Chris Jericho defeating Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. Thank you. That has yeah. to be the highlight. Now I want to watch this. And we also had um, 
Glenn Jacobs beating Phil Brooks in a Republican primary. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That is Kane defeating CM Punk in the singles match. Sorry. And then Punk probably complained about it. And did well, something. I mean, you know. Oh, and the, <laughs> there was something called an ECW championship. <laughs> Whatever that is. What did that stand for? Uh, Extremely cu- Cute Wrestling? Uh, it's, yes. No, tonight it stood for Extremely Christians Wrestling because Christian beat Jack Swagger for the belt. Oh, that's so extreme. It's so extreme, bro. So extreme. Yeah. Um, Didn't it get defended and there wasn't there a DQ at one point? Probably. I want to see who yeah. it was. So your sole survivors from the 2009 backlash are uh, Dolph Ziggler, Kofi Kingston. Obviously, uh, Kofi winning out that. Uh, Randy Orton. Uh, Shane McMahon, I guess, sort of, kind of. And uh, Kane. Got to be Kane. Got to be Kane. That's got to be Kane. Kane. Got to be Kane. Everybody got to get the gag in. All right. Um, but anyways, so so we have, uh, from there, we have this year's Backlash. And, uh, I, you know, this is our first representation of SmackDown at its own pay-per-view. First time since whenever the heck we did that last. And here in uh, four days as of this recording, we have uh, a whole five matches um, um, listed. <laughs> Five? Does that seem Does right? anyone think this goes three hours? No. You think it's going to be a shorter one? You think there's going to be more I, like a network special? Yeah, I think, I is... think it is. I think it is, Sorg. That's not a problem. I honestly don't think that's a problem. If this yeah, kind of becomes I, like I the Saturday night's main event of, of, of events, I mean, okay. You know, if, if it's fun, if it's entertaining, if there's some good matches in there. Sure. I feel bad. I feel bad for the live crowd if that's the case. Ah, uh, it depends on what the live what? crowd's there for. Um, I mean, it could, still could be plenty one entertaining would, for something. One would like assume that. they're there for wrestling. So, like. well, <laughs> I don't know. Um, oh well, it does does go right into the 2009. Um, yeah. Thank you, WWE.com's ever flowing pages. Um, so, let, okay, let's go, Dallas. <laughs> That didn't sound good at all. Ever flowing pages. What? What? Edge and John Cena's in a main event. Yeah, I get, it's. I think most of the WWE audience is hating the site net now. Um, but anyways, uh, so first of all, we got Dean Ambrose and and AJ Styles. You can't hate that. I don't hate it. Like, I, I, here's the thing. Uh, there's nothing I hate about SmackDown. No. Like, and this is a general thing. There's nothing I hate about SmackDown. SmackDown is perfectly fine. Like, it's not a a blow your socks off show, but it's a good show. Like it's a fine show. Like the, to me, and not to view off the backlash, the difference between the two shows right now is that SmackDown's fine, decent, good, like a decent watch. Raw is either really amazing or really bad. Like that's think, true. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, that's just what I was going to say is like SmackDown's okay. Like it's okay, but it's just not, you know, changing professional wrestling or anything. You know, it's not. No, no. My uh, my biggest problem with SmackDown is that there are so many people I'm just tired of. Like, there are so many people that I just don't want them to. I don't want to see them do anything. Like, I need them to take time off and refresh themselves. I, I know, like, obviously, you, you have like, some issue with Bray, Randy Orton. I think a lot of people do. Bray, Randy, Ziggler. Um, it looks like the Usos are in the middle of actually doing something creative, which will be nice. <laughs> as, in, as in turn heel, which, yeah. in, which they would never do with Roman. They are so like full-fledged set on making sure Roman never turns heel. They're fine with doing it with like the Usos, who were just like cannon fodder. In the like, the only reason I think I think they are. You can argue they're bland, but I think the only reason people completely turned on the Usos was because of their alignment with Roman Reigns. And, well, they said that much on Talking Smack. So, and this is kayfabe. Sorg, this is your kayfabe segment of the night. The Usos are turning heel because people don't like Roman anymore. Like, why is that a thing? Like, why isn't Roman turning heel? <laughs> that because people reason. don't like him. That is the reason the Usos are turning heel. Because Roman, who is on another show and no longer has any association with them, does not like it. 
because it's not liked by the fans. Like, like that's the reason well, that they. Also, you got to remember before they teamed with Roman Reigns all the time and found out they they were siblings. Um, <laughs> found out. Yeah. I love and, the idea that they just found yeah, out. They went on Ancestry.com. But, but remember, they were also teaming with another fan favorite of the WWE Universe and the Smarky fans, John Cena. So yeah. you're, you're, you're tagging them up with John Cena, and then you're tagging up the, with them with, uh, with Roman Reigns, and it's starting to build up the angst. And, and also, let's not forget, they were out half the year. And they still won an award that a that the fans voted for, mm. that the wow. fans quote unquote wow. voted for. Going so, back to, I was going to say going back to the main event for Backlash because uh, we completely went off the rails. I apologize. Um, I, I hope Styles takes it because honestly, those people that like Mike mentioned that he's kind of tired of, I would lump Ambrose in there too. Oh, like, I was about to say him. I think he uh, Ambrose can be okay at times, but sometimes he's just I don't know, like a dick. A dick, but a also dick. he just uh, he just doesn't translate well. Like honestly, that Stone Cold Steve Austin interview was the worst thing that could have ever happened to Dean Ambrose's career. Yeah, because it's, he came off as distant, aloof, and boring, and now he's translated every like that's all I see now. That's all I see. He's not a lunatic fringe. Like, he has a segment on SmackDown where he sniffed a donut and put it back. I'm like, whoa, he's so crazy. No. Like, he he doesn't have a character anymore. His character was predicated on the fact that he hated Seth Rollins. Like, that was his character and a half. And he doesn't have that anymore, and he's got nothing. He is like, absolutely zero. Like when he's being a little bit heelish against Dolph, he show steered into that because that was really good. But him as a face, he has no direction at all. I would argue Roman is more interesting. Uh, yeah, yeah. I would say that. Stay with me here when I say this as well, um, and because I mentioned we mentioned like we talked last night about Mick Foley and how he cut a really amazing promo in the beginning, and that, that's the Mick Foley that we wanted for a long time. It's the guy that can cut phenomenally like emotional and like gripping promos. Um, I feel like Dean Ambrose, for the most part in WWE, has like skipped that because he's a lot of people compare him to Mick Foley as far as like style and like type of character. Like he skipped the good promo like stuff that made Foley famous by Mick Foley and just has been phoning it in Foley. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like he's just been that. And it's like, and and that's putting his stuff on the indies aside because John Moxley, if you watch, just watch some of the tapes, John Moxley is very different from Dean Ambrose. Very Mm -hmm. different. Uh, Honestly, also you have to take into comparison who he has right now. He gives good matches and gives good feuds with Bray Wyatt and Seth Rollins. Yeah. Right. I I don't even think the and feud he had with Wyatt was very good. And well, that, it was notable. It was like notable. It, like it I, made him it made it made him who he well who he was back then. And, and it was and we kind of shit on it before, but he was kind of aloof then as well. Because how did he lose? He he, but he actually did stuff. Yeah, like he, he he grabbed a hot dog cart, pulled it down to the. Room. He showed up in an ambulance on a neck, in a neck brace. Now he sniffs donuts and smells hairspray. I would yeah, say that's still that, that was his. That was those were his segments tonight. Like I would argue, like the Seth Rollins feud is like the only really successful feud Dean as a singles guy has been yep. because look at the other ones, Bray, you know, I, yeah, it's notable, but I agree with Mike in that it wasn't that good. Um, but who Jer- else can you, who else can you name? Uh, Jericho. The whole stuff with Jericho was awful. Yeah. Was, uh, yeah. Uh, clearly. I mean, we've talked about before the stuff with Lesnar, 
Like I'm mm-hmm. actually his most interesting feud I think he had that wasn't with Seth was with Roman. Yeah. And yeah. that's that's only because they were the best friends and need and they WWE didn't want to turn either of them heel. Right. It was a buddy's feud, right? Yeah. So um all right, aside from that, but we still we do have him and AJ Styles, which, you know, let's see what the match turns into. Uh, I'm I'm loving AJ Styles. Yeah. I'll say that. Like I think his whole, you know, arrogant, you know, guy who's beaten John Cena and thinks he's the shit now is amazing. Like I think that's really good. I I kind of hope his thing turns into where he wins the title and he's the face that runs the place and he does it for a month and he realizes, "Oh my god, this is a lot of stuff, you guys." <laughs> <laughs> and he just goes nuts. And he just goes absolutely insane. And he just gives his- his sweat band back to John Cena. Yeah, he's like, you know what? It, I mean, it. I'm not gonna give you the belt, but you can be the face that runs the place all you want. <laughs> I don't, I don't want that moniker anymore. I'd rather. I, I, be. I, I hate Good Morning America. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's gonna be the man, uh, gap in his teeth. What the heck? I don't even like to say good morning to Georgia, let alone the whole country. <laughs> and then he gets on his Tron cycle and leaves again. <laughs> <laughs> This is a great, great, great tangent. <laughs> it's your baby, AJ. What? All right, we're done. What? We're done. All right, all right. Let's, let's, let's move on. Well, we have well, uh, the SmackDown Women's uh, Division appears to be uh, fighting and clawing for an identity, uh, and uh, <laughs> we we got Nikki Bella, we got uh, Becky Lynch. I knew they had a six woman uh, match tonight, and uh, there was a lot of emphasis on on Becky Lynch. Uh, mm-hmm. In the match, I didn't know if there was anything particular that happened with that uh, going uh, into this. But either way, we got a six pack challenge with all the women. What and a it's way! An, it's it's elimination sorg. Oh, okay. It, it's you know what? That tonight, I, I don't. I hate that less. I hate that less actually, because like six pack challenge means like crazy spot fest, lots of women, probably not enough time. Like it feels like it feels like SmackDown of two thousand nine. You know, uh, uh, sorry, so, there's only five matches. There has to be actually there's six. I I, I, I well, misread yeah. that. So there are six because of developments tonight. We'll we'll, we'll get into in a moment. Um, well, the women's division obviously it's not Charlotte and and Sasha and and Bailey, right? Uh, but and, and it's a lot of girls that just came up from NXT that maybe weren't as hot coming up as uh, as the three I just mentioned, for instance. Um, eh, you know, you know. Alexa is up there. Yeah, I mean she's good. I'm not saying they're terrible, but I'm not saying yeah. they weren't lighting uh, uh, shows on fire like the other girls were. I'd like to see them get the chance, and they and they, it's not like they haven't done had good matches and everything, and they're not like ones I look forward to on the card, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they're they're still in that kind of transition phase, I think. Um, and and it is it's, it is frantic. I kind of wish Nikki didn't come back. Oh I, no, I no! Disagree. I, I think I think Nikki's been really good. Yeah, Nick, okay. Nikki's been needed in that division. Okay, well, Nikki, she's Nikki, she's kind Nikki of the is, old anchor. Yeah, yeah, because they were originally having Natty be the anchor of the division, and no, no, Nat, Natty can't anchor a boat, let alone a division. Like no, Natty is her wrestling is perfectly cromulent, but. You give Natty a microphone, and she... I feel like I feel like Cromulent makes sounds like more of a dig than you intend to. Well, no, it, it's just a made up word saying it's fine. It's okay. totally fine. I mean, she's great. It, I mean, she's great. She's she's awesome. It just she doesn't it, stick out she, in that crowd. I I don't know, Natty. Like Natty doesn't know what her character is. No. She wants to be Owen Hart. She's not. She wants to be Owen, but talks like Brett. That's not a good combo. <laughs> no, no, um, no. And I mean, uh, that's accurate. Like, I, like, listen to her promo. She calls herself the Queen of Hearts, but she does it with all of the emphasis of Bret Hart that that don't involve the word "screwed." <laughs> I wonder what Natalia thinks of Finn Balor getting injured. Um, <laughs> but no, uh, like I, I. I think both brands have had pretty solid women's divisions for different reasons. I think NXT, uh, NXT uh, I think Raw's kind of built up like your clear favorites, but there's also a lot of people kind of being left to his side. Like we just saw Alicia Fox last week, really. 
Summer Rae is also on that roster. You, you wouldn't know it. Um, but, by the way, by the way, has anybody noticed the the justice for Summer Rae hashtag that was going around? I, think I that, like Summer Rae. I, I love do. Summer Rae. I, 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 I kind of wish Summer was on SmackDown. I, she would be great on SmackDown. She would be absolutely mm-hmm. great on SmackDown. Um, but like, I think SmackDown has as much as nobody's kind of really stuck out, and maybe that'll change after the pay per view when they have a champion. But they they've kind of been like at least using all of them and giving them all something kind of like they've they've been like Nikki and Carmella this mini thing which I like like I I think it's you know I think it's I enjoy it like SmackDown Smack uh, with, with Raw you have your favorite like you like you said you have your favorites you have everybody you have your favorites up top and then you have everybody else down below mm-hmm. right with SmackDown. Everybody's all in the ball. Everybody's in the pool, and it, it, it's 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 good. You could it, see it, it could be any anybody's game. You look at that. Yeah. You could look at that image of those those six women, and you're like, well, Nikki Bella, well, she's the one that's been there. Okay, uh, uh, Natty's been there forever. Uh, Naomi's been been overly capable, but never never really on top. Uh, Becky's just awesome. Uh, uh, you know, Carmella and, and Alexa Bliss are, are, are the up and comers in this, this situation. Uh, I, you know, it, it really could. You could see it drop the one of them and say, I mean, uh, I can see Alexa Bliss, Bliss being the one that forever says, I was your first women's champion, right? Uh, I, that, that was, that's my hope prediction. I hope they give it to Alexa because I think she's been extremely underrated. Mm-hmm. I, I have a question. On Sunday, will it have been 30 days? Since um, miss Since all, Miss Eva, right. all all PED everything. Maybe I'm trying to think. No, it wouldn't have been all. No, no. it wouldn't have been thirty days yet. Okay, no, no. I didn't Cause, think cause, so, but I wanted to check. Because SummerSlam was just like a couple weeks ago, right? Yeah, but you know, this is the era where we have pay per views all the time. So now yep. I don't know how long. Nothing month makes is. sense if it, anymore. If it, if it is, and they have Eva come in and win it, I think that's great. I think that's something they should. I think that's something they wanted to do, like have Eva be the first champion. I, I, oh yeah, I, I absolutely convinced of that. And like she would have gotten knocked out like in the first five seconds of the match, then come back in at the end and somehow score a win. Yeah, I think that's perfect. Like, I, like, I think. A, what was that, Riz? Like at the end, just have a double pin, and then have Eva Marie just like come up from the just come up from the apron realizing she won. Yeah. That yeah would be I mean, amazing. not, not to get all TNA on you, but yeah. yeah well, it's but, what they could have, it's what they could have done in NXT, but if they did it in NXT with Eva, there would have been a riot. Yeah. Yeah. There would have like, and SmackDown, she can do it and they'll be okay. <laughs> no one will die. Of course. Uh, and, and of course, uh, we have the tag team uh, tournament that's going to. Whoops! Whoa, wait, wait, wait a minute! Wait a minute! No, 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 no! This is not a whoops. This is intentional. Okay. This is I. This is ab- all right. So what happened on really? SmackDown tonight? Yes. Oh no, Amen. This is absolutely intentional. And I'll tell you exactly why. Because they wrote themselves into a corner. They wrote no, no. themselves into okay. a corner with this. Okay. Yeah, um, they, they really did actually. Yeah, they wrote themselves into a corner because um, on SmackDown tonight, the Usos turned heel, and after American Alpha beat them in like 10 seconds legitimately using the uh, Grand Amplitude, the Usos turned heel and attacked Chad Gable's knee. And then on Talking Smack, Shane um, confirmed that American Alpha's out for backlash. So Heath Slater and Rhino will now face the winner of a loser's bracket, I guess we're calling it. Uh, between the Usos and the Hype Bros. And so basically the – because this does a couple things. Everyone wants the American Alpha win because they're clearly the best team in the division, right. which makes sense. But this gives them an out where they don't have to do that because they have this Heath Slater story that's catching fire, mm. and now Heath has to win to get that contract, especially yeah. since they've cast – seven actors as his children and one actress as his wife <laughs> which they didn't show on tv which pisses me off they did show on tv did they yes i thought it was just like they because they had it as like an exclusive no thing. amen they were ringside behind jbl oh, they, were, they were oh yeah oh yeah heath heath went to hug every one of his children after the win 
<laughs> yes. But it was, also, like, it's the best. It's also, I, I, it's still kind of like, I, maybe I'm wrong. It still kind of feels like a write off to me. Like, are we confirmed that it's a, sh- it's a work? Oh, it's, it was a work. Okay. It was, like, trust me, you, you watch a segment. You know exactly what they're doing. Because it's also weird that the match was only, like you said, the match was only 10 seconds. Because it seems like something you would do if Chad was legitimately injured. No, have- no, 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 no. The, the reason they did this was because the Usos had a segment beforehand how saying how, oh, the Alphas think they're hot. But, you know, we've, we've been running this division. So it was an overconfident Uso thing. Okay. Yeah, it was an overconfident uh, Uso thing. Absolutely. That, that's fair. I, I, I would have, like when you first described it, I would have thought it would have been just as easier to like – do the thing where he go they go after Gable's leg and then just exploit it throughout the match. Like, oh no, 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 no. This was an overconfident Usos thing, and that's why the Usos so called snapped. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, 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 I thought one of the great things about it was like the Usos, you know, have been super baby faced the entire time, right? And like JBL was out there saying, This is disgusting, this isn't what it's worth, they were aiming to hurt. You know, like, like, wow, JBL's got getting real with this, you know? I, yeah. I mean, you know, within context, of course. But, uh, like, and so that that gave it a different feeling, and I think it came off really well, and I can't wait to see uh, Evil Uso face paint. Yeah, I, I, sent, I sent out a tweet, like, uh, while I was watching. I'm like, the Usos just got more character development in five minutes than they have their entire run in WWE. It's going to turn out, turns out, this is a side effect from all that five-hour energy they've been dousing with. <laughs> <laughs> Performance enhancing drugs, Sorg. Yeah, like, exactly. I get busted just like Roman. Exactly. How is five? How is five hour energy not been like lambasted for being? Hey, maybe not too great for you. Like like St- Stinger, whatever that Chris Jericho was singing about. YJ Stinger. Hey. YJ Stinger. YJ Stinger. YJ Stinger. YJ Stinger got me through college, Sorg. YJ Sorg. Stinger was. And now shit. it's illegal. <laughs> That's Sorg. fine. So you realize why it's not being lambasted by them? They're paying them. <laughs> That's why. Are we calling it lambasted now? Lambasted. Yeah, it's a fun word. Um, lambasted? Nope. Sure. No, nope. not sure. at all. Nope, it's lambasted. Um, okay. So as, as, as Mike kind of mentioned, Slater and Rhino have to win, right? Yeah, they, they kind of have to win. Yeah. I mean, they, they cast seven actors as his children. Yeah. They have to do this. <laughs> Because also, if they don't do it, like, so he just doesn't show up on SmackDown. Like, what? <laughs> like, you know. Yeah, no, they ha- – yeah, because then Heath is a free agent again and goes to, oh, I don't know, TNA. <laughs> like, <laughs> he does something. He's got to do something. But, yeah, Heath and Rhino have to win. They absolutely and I'm, have to win. And, and I'm cool with that. I want to go and give a shout-out to a uh, friend of the show, uh, Ring of Honor Shane Taylor. Uh, is that – that, uh, that is interacting with me on uh, Twitter right now. So just want to give a, hey, what's up? We miss you. Hi, Shane. We, we miss you up here in the Cleveland area. I know uh, Avon gets you all to himself down there. Uh, Cleveland, I, I Cleveland, do. Pittsburgh area. Um, but he's from, yeah, was, was, he, he did the Cleveland thing. So I know he's from Cleveland, but we're not in Cleveland. Listen, sort of. listen I don't know where I'm at anymore because I was in Cleveland last week. So you I'm were a little, in Cleveland. I'm a little confused. A lot of Sword time. was in Cleveland. I was in Pittsburgh. Eamon was in Texas. All right, Riz, uh, we're, Riz was we're going in to, Chikara. Now going, that we know geography, no, we were all still everywhere. not. Still not. I don't. Even, I was in Tennessee, and I'm still not entirely sure where to find it on a map. But anyways, uh, we're going to get back to a little bit more backlash. Um, but uh, I want to give a shout out, of course. Um, the poster is behind me. I started editing that today. I know. Finally, I had a trip. I'm sorry. Uh, RWA's aggression is going to be coming up here on IndieWrestling.us. As far as some other fantastic releases. Uh, that you can check out over there uh, from our good friends at Vicious Outcast Wrestling uh, that, that just had their uh, 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 tournament of death uh, uh, this week. Our king of... Geez, I'm so sorry. I'm missing the name of it. Um, but uh, their big death match tournament uh, happened down in uh, Fairmont, West Virginia uh, this, this, uh, uh, this past week. And it is called have it in a moment uh but uh you can check out last year's i lord of anarchy tournament jeez how do you forget a name like that uh but you can check out the 25 uh 2015 edition over on indie wrestling.us if you are into the deathmatch action front of the show uh uh connor connor um uh, uh well g raver was on her as far as as well as uh 
I, I'm sorry, I tried to say the other Connor that I know is not a wrestler. <laughs> Connor Claxton was a part of that. Uh, Matt Tremont, Jason Gorey, and so many more. Uh, check that out as well as their brand new uh, posts uh, uh, on IndieWrestling.us, including Roll the Dice, because I miss dice-based uh, wrestling shows. Uh, so Roll the Dice, and of course, Friday the 13th, uh, again, check out Fisher Southcast Wrestling and, uh, and, and of course, the uh, very European travels of Claudio Castagnoli and the IWC. I know his travels aren't doing very well in this best of seven tournament, uh, but uh, you can check out over there as well or at IWC Wrestling. And also around the Indies. And also check out the Around the Indies where, where, where there is rights about the Indies. And yes. let you know. What did you miss this weekend in the Indies? Look for that very soon. Indie Wrestling. Yes. Dot U.S. Yes. Let's talk about Backlash some more. There's a lot more going on with this. Clinton, the hot and heavy match. We're all looking forward to Randy Orton and Bray Wyatt. Okay, Mad Mike, I need you to not say anything about this for a couple minutes because I know I know the way you usually go with Bray Wyatt. So I just want to I just want to hold off for a moment. On that, okay. but generally, um, yeah, I, I'm kind of not with this either. I mean, Bray Wyatt's doing Bray Wyatt things. <laughs> Bray Wyatt's doing Bray Wyatt things, and, and I like Bray Wyatt things, right? Did you guys, did you guys see the story thing that Randy Orton talked about? I did see the story about the snakes. <laughs> okay, I have a question. Uh, is it about snakes? No, no. Um, it Randy, is about his penis. Randy, no, no, it's not. Because um, generally, I don't like snakes, and I don't trust them to begin with. I don't care if they're the little pig nose snake that Chachi's uh, fiance has. Uh, I don't trust that little damn thing. Um, so the, Randy Orton tried to out Bray Wyatt, Bray Wyatt, which is fine. That's that's okay. Um, Randy Orton was telling a story about a man who had to shoot a rabbit because apparently he needed food and was out in the woods, and. Um, when he came upon the rabbit, he saw a snake in the grass. And Randy Orton is saying he's the snake. Get it? He's a viper. Um, I have a question, Sorg. If, if Bray Wyatt is the man in this case, which he clearly isn't because Bray Wyatt has been saying this whole time he's a god. But let's just say Bray Wyatt's the man. What the fuck is the rabbit? Renee Young. Next question. Next Mike, question. Mike, Mike, Next Mike, question. Mike. <laughs> Mike, I thought long and hard about that, uh, all of five seconds. Uh, and I have the answer to that question because uh, Brother Bray uh, took the motorcycles out into the desert. And I asked him to only fuel the motorcycle with half a tank of gas to get to where we were going. <laughs> you don't remember that promo? Riz is giving me your face. No, but that's amazing. Remember, no. that, remember that Undertaker Big Show promo in like 99 where he talked about – Big oh, big show carrying, carrying a motorcycle on his back and oh, wearing, yes, uh, yes. Burning, yeah. wearing, wearing 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 skin boots and a snake necktie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Bray Wyatt loses a nerve feud. Moving on. All right, moving, <laughs> moving on. on. Got to make it look good Randy, for. Oh, okay, make Randy, make, Randy, make Randy Orton did. look good for his uh, rematch in a house show at Staples Center or wherever uh, against <laughs> against uh, uh, Brock Lesnar. Uh, sorry, Eamon. I was gonna say Randy Orton gets nothing from this because, like, this, I don't know. It just felt so like he's just like I got beat up by Brock Lesnar. Amen. Hey, we have bro- nineteen pay per views a year. We gotta we gotta fill time. Why is <laughs> Randy Orton on SmackDown? I don't know. I why don't know. why is that motherfucker on SmackDown? Do you no, want him on Raw? You know. You yes. Know, I then found what are you doing with on Raw? Something else. <laughs> I was Anything reminded. Else. I was reminded. Hey, hey, Randy Orton's still a big deal. Apparently, he sells some merch or something. Because I was going through my stuff. Apparently, for, he sells some merch going, or something. I was going through my 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 merch my 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 towels and stuff for for going to the go going swimming on the vacation and everything. And I pulled up one towel. And I'm like, what the what the hell is this? And I pull it out and I, I unfurl it. And I'm like, oh, I have Randy Orton a uh, 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 beach towel. How'd that get there? How'd that get there? Oh, well, actually, I won a uh, SummerSlam pack from the local city paper a couple years ago. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so you didn't buy the towels. Work. <laughs> I understand the flip flops that I gave. I think Chachi because they didn't fit me uh, fell apart after a week. So, much like 
Randy Orton in that match with Brock Lesnar. But anyways, <laughs> um, anyways, back to it. And of course, the match that I know we all care about is the Miz and Dolph Ziggler. <gasps> Way to I keep mean, the fire I, I going. Anything. Honestly, I like it. You like it? I didn't see anything. I didn't see anything this week. I thought last week was is good. Is this on the pre-show? Is this on the pre-show, Riz? I like it. You like it? Wait, Riz, is it? Riz, I want you to sell me this match that I've oh, seen please, so try. many times. No. no. I'm not going to. No? I'm going to enjoy the match. Okay. Okay. Sure. I'm going and to maybe enjoy we'll the see, match. Like, like New Miz. Because no. it's New Miz. No. It's, it's King of... Uh, King of Soft Style versus Dolph Ziggler. <laughs> he needs to start calling himself that immediately. There's King of sure. King of Safe Style. The There's Miz is the King of Safe Style. He needs to start calling himself that immediately, so mm-hmm. Daniel Bryan can do a one-time contract to Shinsuke Nakamura, and Nakamura can kick off Miz's head. Yeah, that'd be perfect. That's actually kind of that's that's how you debut Nakamura, right? I mean, you don't even need to. You ju- you can just bring him up for a one-time thing because technically, they, you probably can't draft the NXT champion because we've had that. Well, I mean, like when you do, like when when Nakamura loses the belt and he goes up to Raw or goes up to the main roster, that's how you bring him in. Like, yeah, in, in an ideal world, in an ideal world, you know, See, it's already working. Matt Carlin. Uh, yeah. Matt Carlin. Is, already Matt Carlin is at the chat room uh, live at WrestlingMayhemShow dot com. And he says, Dolph is the biggest loser on the planet. Yep. No arguments here. I'm I I'm just saying, I I'm not I don't care about this because of Dolph, but I think Miz is great. <laughs> like, you know. Okay. Honestly, yeah. I have I would have more invested in Maurice versus Dolph Ziggler than the Miz versus Dolph Ziggler. Because Miz has Miz and Ziggler have wrestled so many times at this point. And Maurice looked really good holding the Aircon L title at the end of their segment. So, mm-hmm. okay, I'm still positive. Maybe I mean maybe for Riz or you know it, it, it's like it's like you know French fries or really just a delivery device for you to uh, eat more ketchup. Uh, Miz is just a delivery device for you to get more Maurice in your television show. Okay. Yeah. Well, no, I mean Miz is doing great work. Miz is doing. Probably some of the best work of his career that wasn't related to him getting concussed versus John Cena. But I I said this when when we, the, when we had the build up SummerSlam. If Dolph Ziggler didn't win that match, they will never be able to make me care about Dolph Ziggler again. They will never be able to do it mm-hmm. because I feel Dolph I, Ziggler, I felt like he was done after that that last title match. Yeah. Like and he, like there's no lovable loser in wrestling. That if there is, it's the Brooklyn Brawler. Like there, Dolph Ziggler needs to be completely repackaged. Right. Right. In fact, I would just say, go to TNA. <laughs> Can we no, send and, him? No, to and TNA? I'm not joking about this. Like. Dolph Ziggler was doing some of the best promo work of his career leading up to that SummerSlam match. And the fact that they didn't pay it off with Dolph Ziggler getting a big win, it deflates his entire character. It deflates everything that he put into that match for an aloof jerk ass who wears a leather jacket and can't string two sentences together in a goddamn interview. Like, it's ridiculous that they didn't give Ziggler that belt and actually make it matter and make it mean something. I, I agree and disagree because I I agree. They should have done something different. I'm not a fan of Dean right now. So I I think, yeah, put it on Ziggler, but also like if you watch the SummerSlam match, as much as I've liked the promos, I know a lot of people like the promos. The crowd didn't care. The no. crowd did not care at That's all. That's because that it's match. Dolph Ziggler, and they knew he was going to lose anyway. But even with the stuff he was delivering, like, like I, I, I just think, I don't know. I think you. I think he needs some repackaging. He needs something different. He needs. He needs to win something. He needs to win something. And I'm not talking about so. the Air Continental Championship. I'm not talking about that. They need to shit or get off the pot with Dolph Ziggler. 
they they'll, either they, need, they to need to give him like an years. actual run or they need to just not use him at all. Well, no, I don't even think that's what it is. I think they, it wasn't a case of them shitting or getting off the pot. They weren't doing anything with him for years. It's only from the fact that they moved to smack, they, they separated the rosters that they did something with him. He hasn't been doing anything. Like, it's not a matter of, you know, they, you can't, it's not a matter of shit or get off the pot. It's that they, you can't just decide that this guy's important again. Yeah, you can. No. They do it all the time. They it doesn't can. work, though. They can. It's going to fall flat, though, if they, if they did that way. I want to, I want to point out something. Um, uh, while this conversation is going on, the internet sent me as many Dolph Ziggler pictures as possible in my feed. Holy hell. Uh, some kind of retweet. <laughs> so uh, the internet's just like, just in case you didn't know, this is what Dolph Ziggler looks like. Oh, I just got, I just got about 20 more of them. Uh, there's somebody who's got some interesting retweeter uh, uh, going on. Uh, but anyways, so that's enough about Dolph Ziggler. Dolph Ziggler I feel depressed. Uh, so uh, I'm sorry. So- backlash is just not... It's it's okay. Like it's not amazing, but hey, it's a thing it's like, to watch. It's okay. Like, the one thing I was looking forward to was seeing how they get out of American Alpha versus Heath Slayer and Rhino. And whoops, that's not happening anymore. They right. don't have the best team that they have on their show on their first pay per view. Right. Like. Right. Well, I'm, 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 inter- I'm interested in the heat stuff, and I'm interested in the women stuff. That's really all I'm really interested in. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 like they could, they could have had American Alpha versus the Usos in a first round match. They could have had the Usos turn heel during that and cheat to win. Then have American Alpha cost the Usos the match against Slater and Rhino. Then we could have had guess what? Two tag team matches on the pay per view. One for the belts and one in an actual feud. Now I think I think there's a question that I want to ask again next week after we've seen the show and how it comes off because there's a lot of like oh they're going to do this they're not going to do this. I, I don't want to have that conversation. I, I want to. Do we feel like we're right off the bat running into the same problems on the pay per view level? Because I think the shows have actually been generally better than than, than the old era, personally. Yeah. But on the pay per view mm-hmm. level, are we running into the same problems we were when we left the the brand split uh, era? I think they're different problems. Okay. I think we'll have to wait and see. Well, I think it's a, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I don't know how the paper is going off with it being a separate brand thing. Some are saying we couldn't judge anything because one, it was co branded and two, it was four hours long, so everything got like jumbled. So, like, I don't know. I think, I think it'll be a test on Sunday to see what is going to fly. Because, I mean, it's not just, it's, it's not here's, just, oh, go ahead. Let finish. Let finish. Yeah, let, 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 let you finish. Hold on, go ahead. Okay, so I'm just saying it's not just a SmackDown issue too. This could be a Raw issue as well. Like you got to fill a three hour show with the Raw guys as well. And I know they're bringing in the Cruiserweights or whatever, but like we're gonna get probably like Shining Star matches. Like we're gonna get stuff like that, you know. But you like, know what? They've already announced a couple matches for for Clash of Champions. I'm already more engaged in it. Well, yeah, because Raw's the more important show. Like it's it, I well, no, no doubt. The, there's there's stories on Raw. There are no stories on SmackDown. The only stories on SmackDown are match it, are stories that don't have matches attached to them. Like I, th- we, I like think we should be getting an Usos versus American Alpha match. I would wait. I would wait a month or not a month. I'd wait until after this pay per view because they're building to two new belts. Like I think once we get to the point where they have all their belts, everything set in stone going forward. I think I'd like to think. We're gonna get more story stuff. You know what I mean? But why is why is Kalisto versus Baron Corbin not on this show? It should be. It should be. It absolutely should be. That's the only consistent story SmackDown's had since the since the brand split. And it's not like they've been featured much. Is the issue? Nope. Like the, they, they, the feud's literally only been them doing backstage promos, where like the way Baron shoves them up against the wall or something. Like, are you gonna use these guys? Like, I. I Whatever about the feud or whatever, use these guys. Like Baron is there. Baron's supposed to be a guy that you brought for a reason. Like use him. Like that that frustrates me. But like, you know, I I think this is also going to be more than just a SmackDown issue. This is going to be a Raw issue. I know they have the more important stories and the more important wrestlers, but you're also still filling a three hour pay per view. Well, see the thing is, I think. I think the problem we ran into last time 
was that they were doing a lot of bad stories. Mm-hmm. And right now, at least on SmackDown side, because I know they're doing like different tournaments and stuff like that, but still, you can do stories with tournaments. And right now, they're not doing any stories. Like, I still don't even know why Dean Ambrose and AJ Styles are fighting for the belt. It's just because AJ beat John Cena. Like, because Dean Ambrose has contributed nothing to the feud. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't like the, I don't like the feud for the title. I think they have done sto- some. I mean, they did the stuff with Alpha and Usos, and they they're doing the stuff with Slater. They are doing some stories at the tournament. Yeah, Heath Slater is the only is the only person who has a storyline that has a match. Yeah, I don't. Agree. Yeah, and, and don't probably and arguably the best storyline on SmackDown. Oh yeah, no, and the Heath Slater stuff is great. It's fantastic. I love it. All but, right, and uh, yeah, I, I think I think. We have analyzed, we have looked at, we have torn apart, up and down, the backlash. Now let's watch we, backlash. Sorg, Sorg, we get yeah, backlash you know, from you backlash. Know, yeah. You know, can I? It, can it, I it's I was, like it's sorry, like backlash. Sorry, because Riz had a point. It's I like apologize. backlash has uh, had some pre-lash. Riz. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let's let's back off a little bit here. Let's let's take it back. We we're in the first edition of a pay per view for a new SmackDown for something that's different. Let's not all jump negative down everybody's throats. I agree. Let's then. No. What the fuck? No, no, I am agreeing. What the what? fuck was that whole thing? I, 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 what I'm saying is that we should wait until after Backlash. Yeah, right? I'm. We can wait, but as of right now, they're not. Like no, I was I was asked for my opinion on the matches. I don't yeah. feel very strongly about a lot of the matches on the show. Yeah, it it just feels like a WWE pay per view. All right, Riz, did you finish your thought? But then again, I'm not paying for the pay per views. I'm paying Riz, for NXT. Riz, so. Riz, are, are you? Did you? Are you? Did you have more thoughts? No. Before I go to commercial. Go to commercial, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, you know what we're not split on in our opinions, especially Mad Mike especially Mad Mike, it's about pizza. It's always been about pizza, right? Right? right. I mean, it, 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 it's the lifeblood of the nerd. It's the lifeblood of the wrestling fans and the pay-per-view parties. And, oh, man, there will be so many pay-per-views for you to party if you would like to do that. Uh, I mean, this is only helping the pizza business. This is only helping our good friends at Slice on Broadway. Our good friends uh, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. Uh, not this week, but uh, we, we uh, you know had a little bit of a weird schedule this week. But um, Mike, I see on your Twitter that you are working off the slates on Broadway that you did consume. Uh, but <laughs> as I'm looking for uh, your 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 picture, man, you you have a lot of images on your. Oh wait, that's old. That wasn't. You're me. welcome. You have a lot of <laughs> images going on there, and not the one that I'm looking for. That's because the one you're looking for, I sent that through the Mayhem Show account. Oh, that's right. Okay, I'll look. For, I'll look for that too. Uh, but our good <laughs> friends at Slice on Broadway, uh, uh, Mr. Mad Mike, was of course here in studio to to have at it, but he also got to attend uh, PNC Park, the Pittsburgh Pirates, and Slice on Broadway down there. Mike, this is the first time you've had it where it hasn't been uh, delayed via podcasting timing and pizza pickup and and fresh out of the oven. Uh, uh, since I first took you to to go see uh, Slice on Broadway, how's it going? Yes, it sorgo was delicious. It was delicious. It, it was the only good taste in my mouth I had that day because the pirates got killed. Uh, but yeah, it, it was it was delicious. I had I went with the Carlinses, and uh, we all enjoyed pepperoni pizzas. And by the way, we don't mention this: delicious garlic nuts. Ooh. Yes. Yes, they were, they were fantastic. Uh, uh, yeah, we went to the one at PNC Park, and it was really a lot of fun. Awesome. Awesome. Go check them out. Our friends, SliceOnBroadway.com. Three locations, Beachview, Carnegie, PA, and PNC Park, the home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Uh, SliceOnBroadway.com, PGH underscore Slice on the Twitters, and Slice on Broadway on the Facebook and Instagrams. Check them out. Let them know the mayhem sent you. 
you'll be hungry too. Well, let's take a little message uh, for other shows all around in the podcasty podcast world, and we'll be right back with the big question. Let's talk tech. Tech news discussions from the people in the industry right here in Pittsburgh. Online, gadgets, startups, and more. Check it out at awesomecast.net. This is the Aaron Sheik. You listen to the Mayhem Show. Iran, number one. Russia, number one. USA. I, I just want to plug the NXT Women's Division potluck before I leave tonight. <laughs> That's really the only reason I came on the show. Because right. I don't have... Now that the keys to the Around the Indies have been passed off to Riz, Woo. I need something to promote. So All right. I'm going to just keep pushing Matt, that you can, women's division potluck. Matt, you can promote your appearance on the Midweek War this week when we talk to Krista Joseph. I'll do that too. And I'll put the um, Lucha Underground 65 Guys. images and no answers. Surprise, <laughs> surprise, Matt Collins. You just plugged the potluck for NXT. Uh, already in progress, the Wrestling Mayhem Show, episode 536 Tuesdays. Uh, Mainstream Matt has joined us as well here, uh, as well as The Riz, Man Mike from Poughkeepsie, and still with the state of the hat, it's Eamon Payton down in Dallas, Texas. It floods. Hi, Captain. He needs that. It floods down there. Hi, Captain. Right? So. <laughs> yes, because the, the hat's going to keep me afloat, Sorg. Listen, everybody's going to look to you as, oh, crap. There's a lot of water. He's going to know what we're to do all, about this. We're all dying. We're all drowning right now, but at least that one guy is keeping theme. It like, really kind of leads to that, that religious conversation we just had off the air, and I didn't even record it for gold. But it's time if you want a religion, for, I was going to say, if you want to hear us talk about religion. But in the meantime, <laughs> you're going to have to settle for the religious experience that is the big question. This week, I got a question for you guys. Um, so... You know, I, I think we've seen some really interesting um, 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 guys that have moved from where they're doing well, Marley well, or or they're guys that do well, but not in a place where they can do well. Um, I'm speaking, of course, of course, Nakamura coming from uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling, and we see his position and uh, on, on top of NXT. Um, I'm thinking guys like Bobby Roode, Austin Aries, that I'm, I'm forever continually amazed at how amazing they're doing now which is obvious considering how great they were in the machines that maybe weren't so great for them in the past with your Ring of Honors and your, your uh, uh, what was it? oh, Impact Wrestling. That's right, that's right. Uh, so, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so, so who is somebody now that you're seeing out there in Impact, Ring of Honor, uh, 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 Lucha Underground even, uh, in, in, you know, anywhere else, that you're like, that's a guy, he's doing, he's doing good, or there's potential, but man, if he got in that WWE machine, he dropped into NXT. Watch that rocket take off. Who 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 are you kind of like the guys you're 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 kind of like pulling for right now at this point? I got mine. Okay. Uh, Dalton Castle. Fuck you. Sorry. <laughs> He's the one that immediately came to mind when you uh, asked me that question. Yeah. Um. Particularly, and this is like a really it's like selfish small part of it, but actually a really big part of it now that you think about it. The fact that WWE entrance themes have been so good nowadays, like I can only imagine the Dalton Castle WWE entrance theme. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I have a question. Do you guys think Dalton Castle would work in WWE? Yes. Because not, Exhibit A, Tyler Breeze. Not as he is Exhibit, now. No, if, no, 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 if no. they if they can if they actually focus on him, then if they if they learn from that mistake with Tyler Breeze, then yeah, because I don't think I, it had anything to do with Tyler's gimmick. There are two guys that I've had the pleasure to work with that I, I'm filming these guys, and I'm like, this guy should be in WWE, right? Character, charisma, everything like that, and I think they rise above a Tyler Breeze. They rise above mm-hmm. even a, a Fandango currently. I'll say. Uh, and that's that's Dalton Castle and RJ City, yes, like easily, right? And I think I, I think I, I, and the guys, the guys that Riz have, Riz has had an experience with as well, yes. And I, I was going to say, um, you bring up the Tyler Breeze. I bring up the fact that he has changed. Like, he has uh, Dalton Castle has changed his character mm-hmm. before. He has he and. In ROH, he's Dalton Castle, the party peacock. 
in Shakara, he was smooth sailing Ashley Remington, which is pretty much a totally different character, a totally different angle. And he pulled, he pulled, hit that one out of the park. So I think he, you give him a brown paper bag and he will make that brown paper bag entertaining. That's right. We saw a variety of it. Don't think it's just like the Ring of Honor, Dalton Castle. Although yeah. I, I, I think there's a, a rendition of that that could do tremendous on the NXT stage as well. But yeah, I think we're all kind of mm-hmm. along that line. Let's see what, like, see what you guys can do with this. Um, but f- if I can, if I may answer, sort Go ahead. Uh, child literally took mine. Took Damon, some bitch. Say um, answer it. So, <laughs> uh, for me, I say the one guy that I, I, and I'm going with ROH as well. Uh, and of another friend of the show, Raymond Rowe. Ooh, yes. Yeah, he, he Ray he, Rowe would have would be awesome in WWE. Mm-hmm. Like he would be like just imagine him going up against Braun Strowman. He would annihilate him. <laughs> but it would be it, it would be an awesome match. I mean, I think not because in NXT right now too. Yeah, not because he's a friend of the show, but because he's amazingly strong. And amazingly talented for for his size and everything. So yeah, Ray Rowe. And the reader, he's a guy I look. I've always looked at and says, "Well, he's not like WWE body guy or anything, right? Like he just looks like he walked right out of like a factory in Cleveland and into a ring, right? And even now, mm-hmm. and now he's even more of a brutish, imposing force, right? Um, yeah, absolutely. I think I think they can have a lot of fun with him." On there, I mean, just seeing him throwing. It, it, we've seen him, Riz. I think you have too in battles against Samoa Joe in the past uh, on the Indies. Uh, to see him in there with uh, with a uh, uh, Shinsuke and some of these other guys, I think would be tra- pretty tremendous. Mm-hmm. So, Matt Carlin's. Hi, Matt. Yes. Do you have a pick? I think of everyone that I'm kind of working through in my brain. I think the one I would go with would be Ricochet. Ooh. High flying can do things no one else really can do. Um, I wouldn't let him wear a mask because he's a handsome fella. Put him on some uh, souvenir cups for all the ladies. Um, I think he could have that kind of a vibe too. I think uh, you know, well, Sorg. I mean, as we've learned from the Shield, you know, if you can get the ladies to cheer for you, you know, you got a good thing going. So, and uh, he's obviously spectacular in the ring. Um, I might be a little bit worried about durability issues but i'm hopeful that uh he can uh work a safe style when he's on the house shows at least so ricochet the man i i want to throw one out here you know i'm thinking about it and 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 it's even against kind of the initial thought of my question um (laughs) so you're going against the rules of your own big it's gonna make sense who is okay. a guy? Who is a guy that's uh, um, done some big things, but could do something bigger? And this may be a little bit colored because I realized like there was like a mention in a news story that that maybe he's been backstage at WWE. But and I was thinking, well, this guy could drop in and do some matches. And I'm like, is he really going to flourish in NXT? Like, I think you'll have the fanboys of this guy, and they'll respond to it. But I don't know if he would like have a great run or anything like that. And I could be wrong with that. But I think if you bring in this guy and uh, have him had a run at um, commentary, we're going to need some new commentators. I don't think Corey Graves is going to stick around for much, very much longer uh, with his raw gig, to be honest. Um, and they're going to have to cultivate new. You don't new. like that? What? You don't like Corey Graves commentating? Well, no. No, he's he on, on NXT. Like, no, no. Like, Corey's, Corey's, Corey's going to be raw. He's raw, moved to raw, raw officially, oh, so I think they're going to oh, yeah. – Try to graduate some more new people, try them out, and build them up, because that's what NXT is for. Um, Are you about to say Amen? So, <laughs> did I, I did you miss yeah. the part where I talked about having a run in the ring and and seeing how they're doing? Sorg, are you talking about Amen? <laughs> Amen's my backup uh, pick in case Eamon. somebody took this person. But I think uh, signing uh, Cole Cabana and uh, having him a run at, at announcing 
you know, again, that kind of Corey Graves kind of role uh, could be very interesting. And and hopefully uh, be – I think Colt is a guy, obviously, with, with, with what he's been doing, uh, and hopefully this would be something he continue to do. He could be a personality on your WWE Network as well. Okay. That I always get the sense that – I always got the sense that Colt is someone who could probably – who probably has an offer waiting for him with WWE as soon as he is done and tired of traveling the world and, and wrestling independently. Really? Really? I kind of get that mm-hmm. idea. Really? I don't know. I think he left on particularly bad terms. I feel like whatever Whoa. Cold War was happening is, is thought a little bit, but maybe I'm just reading a little bit too much some into thoughts. my dirt sheets. But Nobody really knows. Nobody really knows. Maybe you'll I ask don't him. know. Maybe you'll ask him at the next show. I think I will ask him. Instead, of, him again. instead of asking I'll hey, say, how's hey, Colt, nice moon salt. Yeah. When are you going to NXT? <laughs> hey, 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 Sword, can I answer? Yeah. Yeah, you're next. You're next, buddy. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um so I want to preface this by saying I don't want this person to leave where they are. However, that's not the question. I think this person would kick ass in WWE. And that person is Taya. Taya Mm -hmm. from Lucha Underground. I think you drop her in the Raw Women's Division and she would have amazing matches. Amazing matches. I want to see Taya throw Sasha Banks around like a ragdoll, like like you wouldn't believe and then Sasha squeaks out a win like super underdog style like I want to see that I I, feel like she is a perfect fit for the Raw Women's Division I uh, as as you guys know I I got to see uh, a a particular match with her in person that you'll see sometime this next season Um, (laughs) and, uh, and and I was just fascinated by her because she's so good she is at, mm-hmm. she's so good again intergender stuff and and as like i think yeah you're right she would she would be badass up there um nxt uh, wwe wherever she ends up uh, has or, a lot i of mean her. hell throw her in the cruiserweight division <laughs> she, at this like, point you, right? like, you want to make that interesting throw her in the cruiserweight division i taya versus johnny gargano yes please <laughs> I have, yes, I have a follow up. Thank you. Uh, I have a follow up mini question. This, but uh, but but first, I want to say if you guys have any uh, thoughts on this uh, NXT, uh, you know, or WWE, but mostly NXT. You know, who could you see like a Bobby Roode, like an Austin Aries that comes up and says, "There you go. That's where these guys should have been the whole time, right?" Uh, that kind of idea. I have a mini question. So we discussed, of course, on the uh, Indie Indie Mayhem show. Feed uh, a recap of King of Trios, which was a queen of trios uh, uh, winning this year. Uh, you can get the full story on that on that show. Uh, but uh, and of course, a lot of intergender there. We're seeing that in AIW. We're seeing that in, of course, Lucha Underground. If Lucha, I'm sorry, if intergender wrestling were to come to WWE, would it? It would definitely start on NXT, right? It's kind of like a more or how you feel about that, but like if it were to happen anywhere, it yeah. would probably be on NXT. I I don't think it would happen yeah. right now. If you if you asked this four months ago, yeah, NXT. Well, no, I but, wouldn't even say four months ago. I I think if I think intergender we can talk about intergender wrestling in WWE if we talk about it in this magical sense where they don't have sponsors and they yeah. don't have and they don't have uh, people they have to answer to. That's true. Like, That's true. I, I I love I think intergender wrestling is great and I I think it can tell a really amazing story and I think people should do it more. But as long as WWE has sponsors, they're not going to do it. But hold on a second. WWE is just a product, right? Right. Right. I watch a little show called Arrow. There are men and women fighting each other in costumes all the time. I agree. Sometimes even stabbing each other or shooting each other. But but those but, shows have sponsors too. I agree completely, but you have I, I agree completely and I know the point that you're getting at, Mike. But 
you have to look at it how other people view wrestling as opposed to uh, as opposed to stuff like Arrow. People view it differently. People view it as a simulated form of violence. And I'm sorry, people still view it as that. I don't yeah. agree with it. I'm not saying they should view it as that. I'm saying I'm not saying those people are smart people necessarily, but there are plenty of parents and there are plenty of people with power and money that will look at that and say that is violence against women. Right. right. Yes. Um, and to that point, um, whether right or wrong, basically, pro wrestling is such a strange thing to categorize. Anyways, really, the closest thing you could get to pro wrestling is probably mixed martial arts, and no one would ever suggest a intergender match in mixed martial arts that would be insane but um, but mixed martial arts is actual combat yes but just like what Eamon just said is that the simulation of uh, reality is kind of what it's too close it's it's, it's it's too close yeah. because it is a physical thing happening in front of like a few thousand people right yeah i i agree that like i agree with the argument when people are like well why do you like wrestling well it's the same, if you would say like well it's the same reason i like arrow or something like that yeah yeah that makes sense but people still view it in a different form than they view stuff like arrow and other combat based sh- like scripted shows like that they view it in a different way and i'm not saying it's right i'm not saying it, it won't change maybe it will but as of now people will look at that and say there's there's people who don't like intergender wrestling on an independent level, right? Yeah, they don't, there's people right. who think it that that it's simulating domestic violence when it happens on indies. But you know about Jim Cornette. Well, no, it's not. No, it's, it's, it's not <laughs> no, just Jim no, Cornette. I know, I know. I know. It's not yeah, there's, there's a lot of there's a lot of people who don't like intergender wrestling, and I'm not one of them. Um, and I know Lucha Underground has pushed a lot of buttons with their intergender stuff. Um, and I'm glad that Lucha Underground uh, is a- reaction to I think the reaction to the intergender wrestling on Lucha Underground is probably all the proofs you need for why WWE is probably never going to attempt it because yeah. just the backlash that little Lucha Underground gets over it. Now imagine WWE decides to put on pull something out of your head. But you know? see, here's the thing: WWE has already done it. <clears throat> they have, yeah, and, and, they, did and then, it, they did it with China, like and they they've, and they've gotten crapped on for it. They, yeah, they, but, mm-hmm. but did they lose sponsors? No. Well, they, I mean, they didn't. They didn't have the same. They didn't have the same sponsors that they have now. It's they the had same different sponsors, sponsors that were company. That didn't care about the con- They had sponsors back then that if, didn't care about the content on the show. If 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 we look back at. The Daniel Bryan incident, for instance. If that happened on the Attitude Era, nothing would happen. But now, since they are a mar- they're a publicly traded company, they're they're on the stock exchange. Uh-huh. They will lose yeah. a ton of money yeah. if they do that. October is not far, and they have Susan G. Komen. Gonna, they're going to do the Susan G. Komen stuff, and they're going to do all that stuff. And they, ha- you know, they're sponsored by places like Toys R Us now, and mm-hmm. and places like that. Like that, those companies, those types of markets are not going to approve of that kind of stuff. They are just gonna, aren't. Are we going to have to disclose? Wait, 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 wait. Not- are, are we going to have to disclose that Mad Mike works for Toys R Us like every week now? Oh well, okay. That, that wasn't my intention. There's plenty of I, other stuff. I've but seen all shit. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's, I mean, and it's really not even about predicting whether these companies will actually like pull advertising if you try intergender. It's ma- it's managing risk, and if you're WWE and you're riding this razor's edge of yeah. trying to maintain profitability as it is, you are you know you're a, a, a clearly clearly WWE is has an aversion, a deep aversion to taking risks. Yeah, so. Yeah. I don't think that's a chance that they're looking to take. Is and then, the- you know what? And you know what? Thank God there's places like Lucha Underground that are of a certain platform that are willing to say, you know what? We're going to do this. We believe in this style of wrestling. And we're and uh, we, they don't care what the backlash is. It, 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 you know it could I mean? be. It could be like, yeah, there is. Um, you could say a lot of a style of wrestling that has been populated over several years and everybody's like, this is wrestling. This is the next level kind of stuff. And we really have seen it kind of rise to and change what WWE is via the NXT system. 
<laughs> so, and, you know, Ring of Honor was a style of wrestling, right? That, you know, there's, there's a lot of different things. There's Japanese wrestling, there's everything else. And how long did that take to kind of bleed through to the WWE subculture, right? And yeah. now we are getting what we get. And it's actually pretty good for as much as we complain about the brand split and, and whatever and, and our thoughts on, on the shows and certain segments of stuff. Things are pretty good right now in wrestling. Uh, yeah. if, mm -hmm. if you even just look at WWE, CWC, perfect example, right? I mean, as I look at CWC, uh, Cruiserweight Classic, and I'm like, this is Ring of Honor. No, like, it's not even Ring of Honor. It's like the King. Of, it's like uh, New Japan Super Junior Tournament. Right, right, but but like, like that thing the, between the handshakes and everything like that. And I'm like, this is Ring of Honor, you know, and the you know the 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 pure performance and athleticism versus all the storyline stuff. Like like it they. Like Triple H has been watching Ring of Honor, and it's like this is now I'm able able to package it. This no, way. he he's working with Evolve, with Gabe, which is same, which, which is the Ring of, of Honor guy, which, which is the Ring of Honor guy, of course, yeah. right? So yeah. so okay, yeah, you know, um, but either way, you know, that's permeating through. So now we have this new movement, you could say, with intergender wrestling, Chikara. Uh, Lucha Underground and so many feds that are doing interesting and maybe maybe misstepping here and there as well, right? We had the discussion about the original National Pro Wrestling Day and how that turned out with the intergender tag match. Um, um, and again, like people are kind of like people are pushing limits out there where they can do that in a bingo hall versus an arena uh, or on a sound stage instead of an arena, right? Uh, yeah. it, it, could you see this? Maybe this is another thing that takes ten years. Right, that that this um, the culture changes around what's happening out there. It's happening enough places. Maybe Lucha Underground does something groundbreaking and and gets some attention. Right, more even more so. Much like Chikara for being the first to to have their main championship uh, on a, on a girl. All right. Uh, uh, this could be. This is all. These are all little chinks in the armor in the subculture that eventually. Uh, somebody, the Triple H or the next Triple H is going to look at on the next NXT or Cruiserweight Classic project because I think we're on a trajectory. You're going to see a lot of those in the future. Um, and, uh, you know, eventually uh, 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 you know, Shane O'Mac Jr. Uh, gets out there and, and is doing uh, interspecies wrestling on the WWE Network for um, I think, 1999 because of inflation. I think it'll honestly take... And, and people say this on the they, they say this all the time. Wrestling will get better better once Vince retires or he dies. People will say that about everything in, in WWE. I do think in the case of intergender wrestling, I think it's going to be one of those things where Vince and Linda have to retire, particularly Linda, because as I kind of mentioned before, when she was running for office, a lot of the stuff people were throwing back at her was, look at all this stuff that your company produced, and a lot of it was men beating up women. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that was a the thing they showed us like you presented this product and, and you want us to elect and it ruined her, her, her run. It ruined her elector, uh, election run. And until there, that's not the focus anymore. Combined, combined also with like the sponsor stuff, as I mentioned, until that's not the focus, then we could maybe see it. I, I, I'm not saying it will never happen. Like I, I'm with Sorg in 10 years. Let's see how the business has changed. Let's see how the business has changed in 10 years. It's changed a lot in like the last five. So, you know. And no mere conversation. We have spent that. Uh, Sorry. I want to touch base. Let me just take a few minutes. I'm sure only a few minutes. Um, the the midweek war season is changing. Um, our cruiserweight so classic. Shows again. Our cruiserweight classic <laughs> will be wrapping within, I believe, the next two weeks, and of course, that cruiserweight yeah. division will be coming up to uh, Raw. We have Lucha Underground premiering this week, I believe. Um, tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow night, Sorg. Generally this week. I don't know when you hear this. Maybe you've already watched it by now. Uh, we also, of course, Impact Wrestling still checking along. Real Fawner is somewhere. Check your local listings. Um, so, and of course, uh, the NXT still 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 soldiers on and presents new people to me that I my or may not care about in six months if they're still around. Um, still looking out for you, Sawyer Fulton. Uh, anyways, cool. oh, wow. I love that you pull, I love that you pull, Sawyer Fulton. Sorg. I love that you pull that name out, Sork. 
I think but, it was because we were doing the card game inside yes, the car. I have and, so uh, many Sawyer Fultons. We both Fultons. pulled out Sawyer Fulton the exact same time. I think the first card I got in the Tops game was uh, Sawyer Fulton. So uh, yeah. he's now my my kind of unsung hero of NXT. Wasn't uh, Sawyer Fulton technically drafted to uh, Raw in our Mayhem draft? I believe so. Good luck with him, guys. Uh, no, you, you guys had him. Oh, wait, that's true. Hey, yeah, we were wrong. Yeah. Um, anyways, anyways. What was I going with this? Oh, hey, yeah. So, new season. Of course, you guys are going to be talking Lucha Underground with uh, Mr. Christopher Joseph, actually, this week. Of, yeah, of, that's good. We have a lot of questions. We have a lot of questions, but I, I don't want to get too deep into that. But generally, how are you feeling about where everything's at? Impact still impact, I imagine. Lucha Ground is going to Lucha. And uh, and uh, what, what do we have to look forward as far as uh, the, the midweek war, I guess, since we have uh, uh, most of the participants here? All of them. Sword. Sorg. Um, I watched Impact this afternoon. I, I I said I was going to do this if it happened on on the Midweek War last week, and um, I'm going to give my ranking for Impact without even talking about any of the other shows. Um, Impact was the tenth best wrestling show I saw. The tenth this week. Every week. Oh. Every week, sort. You can completely do that, too. Mm-hmm. I yeah, caught yeah, I the latter third of it in a 1984 a vintage camper up on Lake Erie. Um, that's another story. And um, I'm feeling the meh. Like, I'm watching, like, oh, Mike Bennett, sure. Okay, this is a thing going on. And I think one of you guys, maybe it was you, Matt, mentioned, like, uh, take any Mike Bennett uh, uh, promo on Impact. And and you have every Mike Bennett promo on Impact. Um, you can you can completely interchange every single one of his promos from any week he's ever been on Impact, how, and it's the same show. How is Moose more interesting in Ring of Honor than he is on Impact? Um, I'd argue that, <laughs> but um, honestly, Sorg, it's because it's because you don't watch week to week. Um, Mike Bennett has killed Impact. Really? Like so? Yes. He's by himself. He's Almost. The, he's the anti. Billy Corgan helps a lot. He's the anti. Yeah, yeah, Billy Eric, he's the anti Eric pa- Carter. Oh, he he's he's involved in every segment, every angle, and he has no direction. Like zero direction. It's like. His catchphrase does not even make sense. What's his catchphrase? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. The question he's supposed to ask before the catchphrase is, do you believe in miracles? Yes, we do. However, if you just say, yes, we do, that doesn't make any sense. Did he get hired for Maria? What? Yeah. Yeah. Like, like yeah. yeah. It just It's pretty much why they hired him. All right. Yeah. And All right. uh guess what? Maria is the knockouts champion now. I saw that part. I'm so I saw that part. I'm so sad that Cherry Bomb got, um, got <coughs> taken out. Sorg. Sorg, ask me how much um how much in ring time, bell to bell, Maria has spent in impact. For, I bet it was the 15 seconds that I saw. Sorg, it was 22 seconds, and guess what? That is 22 seconds longer than Aaron Rex, who has still not officially had a match on Impact. Oh, okay. oh yeah, to your earlier question, Sorg, about who you think would, we would flourish in <laughs> WWE, that Aaron Rex guy kind of impresses me. I think he can do some big things someday. <laughs> You're not making me watch Impact. Just so you know, <laughs> no, yeah. when, that is not our intention, Riz. Riz, I, I <laughs> wouldn't, I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. Okay. Um, but, but Riz, Riz, Kali's going there. I'm just saying. Um, I don't. You know, I, saw, no, I saw the picture. I saw the picture. I saw the picture. You're gonna I watch it the then. Picture. All right, I, I, I want to move on from this. I want to move on from they're this. They're going to team we, in with Mahabali Shira. <laughs> they're going to win the tag titles. Uh, it's going to be great. Yeah, guys. We, we, have great. Of, we have a lot of other... We've talked a lot about NXT. Uh, Sorg, um, Sorg Impact had a Hardy Boy Jamboree 
No. With a robot singing. No. Let, let, so you're, what else? Now is you're helping me. Now I, I want to go see it. But anyways, uh, NXT, of course, uh, we talked extensively about that. I don't know if we've gone too deep into Cruiserweight Classic. Other other than what what we were just talking about, the Cruiserweight really Classic is awesome. Yeah, other than than Kira nice. Tozawa is my homeboy. <laughs> we have a special connection. I, I feel it. Like he yells and screams while he's wrestling, and I sometimes I'll scream back and I'm like ah 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 ah. <laughs> I'm like yes, yes, hurt that man. And it feels like the Cruiserweight Classic was a pilot for a weekly segment on Raw. <laughs> yes. Um, also, Brian Brian Kendrick is officially WWE's old yeller. Oh no, 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 no! And this is this is not a negative thing because he did it really, really well. It was amazing. It was. Yeah, amazing. I, I want Brian Kendrick to that, that so no, much. Matt? This is for the people who said that there are no storylines on CWC. Like Brian Kendrick has had one of the best storylines going with Daniel Bryan on commentary. Like it's like it's Bobby Heenan calling Ric Flair in the Royal Rumble every mm-hmm. single week that Brian Kendrick is like, come on, Brian! You know? I would argue Brian Kendrick has had one of the best wrestling storylines this calendar year. And I'm very serious about that. Like I'm absolutely – like the only other person who I think has had a better arc – in 2016 is either like sexy star or Kevin Owens. Like, and those are high bars. Those are very high bars. Right. Like, right. Right. Um, so good stuff. And of course is the one that's going to make you guys all melt. Uh, Luch underground. <laughs> yeah. I'm so excited for it. Sorry. I'm so excited. I'm going to take a sip from there's nothing in this glass. <laughs> I, I just keep thinking to um, the last time I think we had Krista Joseph on with us and he kept alluding to season three being like, like it's almost like they were holding back during season two <laughs> and that like season three is actually where we're going to like really turn it loose. So, and, like, so in a way, like as I was watching season two, it almost did have that vibe in a way at certain points where I was like, mm-hmm. it kind of feels like they're either stretching this out or something like that. I, I have high hopes. Yeah. A lot of two. Ultima Lucha two felt like a mid season finale. Yeah. So what you're saying is, uh, I'm going to make this in a comparison that I understand because, uh, I don't get Lucha underground on TV or I don't want to go on anything illegal and, damaging my computer and all that fun stuff. So what you're saying is uh, let's compare The Walking Dead to Lucha Underground. That I, I, don't, uh, think any, uh, I, don't, uh, I don't think any uh, of us uh, watch The Walking uh, Dead. Uh, uh. Let me finish. Okay. So you're saying that season two of Lucha Underground was the I, I know you guys probably don't watch this, but but it was more of the barn, the season where they all went to Herschel's farm <laughs> when nothing happened at all. No, 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 so, so uh, I could spoil like like season like three of, of Walking Dead, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so, so it feels like season two was the the year in the prison where everybody's getting comfortable, and then uh, the season three is is the next season where uh, shit gets real and almost cannibal and, and cannibalistic. Yeah, you could say that. It feels like yeah. season three is going to be where. Stuff gets real. I mean, it, it, it's. I'll look at like the Iron Man franchise. Iron Man two was a lot of setup. Iron Man because a lot of setup for the Avengers. Season three of Lucha Underground is gonna be the Avengers. It's gonna be <laughs> balls out crazy. 
It's going to be balls out And then season four is going to be more reflective in email. I get you. I get you. Sorg, Sorg, did you see the trailer for season three? I did. I did. Drago, did Dra- all- Drago spits fire. There is a ninja clan temple. There is a guy in a white checkered suit. No idea who that is. There's a lot of stuff happening. <gasps> I saw something with the white checker suit guy. And he's I can I can so probably just great. start rambling off lines from the Anchorman uh, fight, and that stuff would be in Lucha Underground somehow. It's so good, and I just saw the matches. Oh, jeez, I can't wait! I can't wait! I need to binge like the next three weekends on Lucha Underground. That's what's gonna. Yes, happen. Yes, you do. That's what's mm-hmm. gonna happen. Uh, I also need about forty bucks to get each season. Um, anyways. Patreon. Uh, oh, Patreon. Hey, guys. Um, <laughs> uh, but anyways, <laughs> so so wrestling's good. Wrestling's good. Can we confer? Wrestling's good as a whole. Yeah, I mean yeah. we can we can nip it stuff, but yeah, wrestling's pretty yeah. good. Wrestling's pretty wrestling's good. good. Lucha's uh-huh. back. CWC is here. If, we get a pay per view on the network every other week. It's all and, right. If, and not to mention. We also have that live CWC finale special too. So that, look at that like a pay per view too, because we might as well. It's gonna be like one match, right? No, I no. believe the live special are is the finals and then the championship. Oh, like the semifinals in the championship? I believe so. Yes. So yeah. it's gonna be like three matches. Yes, I believe so. Wow. And that is, a, that is a live special. So technically, this week we have Backlash. The week after that, we have the live CWC special. And then guess what? The week after that, we got Clash of Champions. Nine ninety nine. Nine ninety nine. All right. I think it's a good time to break it up and uh, find out what you guys learned from wrestling this week. Gentlemen. I, I Someone say something. I I learned that impact just makes me sad. It just makes me sad. As a wrestling fan, there are people I really like on Impact. And by the way, we didn't mention it. Congratulations to Zima Ion. Yes. He won the X Division title. Yes. Yeah. Finally. Good. Good. It was a good match too. Congratulations. It was an excellent match. Easily best part of TNA all week. I am not looking forward to TNA this week. Because it's going to be... That's not true. No, I'm... You're gleeful gleeful over this Delete of the Cave stuff. No, I'm really not. Ever since Chris Jericho ruined it for me. Chris Jericho ruined it for me, and now the Hardys are crazy, Decay is crazy, and there's no one to actually root for. The only person who I can root for is King Maxwell, because he's had the best character development out of everyone in that whole angle. That kid's going to be a star. Uh, what about you, Eamon? Oh, shit. Um, I learned from wrestling this week that God, Gallows and Anderson aren't great at this thing they're doing. They're not great at it at all. Stop doing that. Do something else. I didn't like it when you did the first time with that Green's Green segment, and then you kept doing it for another month, and now the feud is over, and you, 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 well, you, you already lost the big SummerSlam match. And you're still doing it. Actually, it was a disqualification. So yeah, yeah well, it's something. It, it, stop it! Stop it! Do it something a, else. Yeah, it do was something a else with the new day. Put them against fucking Enzo and Cass because it's what people want. Just do it. Like, like you're t- you're dragging the new day down with you because it's like they've you're reaching the point where they've jumped the shark and they need to put drop the belts to somebody and make it feel big. And Gallows and Anderson with their their testicle jokes are not doing it. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. What about you, Riz? So you and I have been through a lot this year, this week, this year, <laughs> this week. Uh, but I learned that I can go to an, I can go to a show without knowing anything happening, without knowing the backstory without knowing the history well the, without knowing anything going on in the pre, like in the present history and enjoy myself and be the, and be a wrestling fan and love the wrestling that I'm watching 
I don't need backstories. I don't need to know, like, I don't, I, I don't need to know who one guy's fighting because they're fighting each other. But I, and and, and that wrestling moment was King, King of Trios. It was that moment I, I realized that I'm a fan because I like wrestling. And I want that to go out everywhere. Like I, I know when we were in the car, I was I was typing in the back that I will re, I will always remember King of Trios because that's how I felt. The euphoric. I was brought back to the time where I thought it was real, and it felt good. That's what I like about it. Aww. That's what I've learned. I learned to like wrestling. I learned that I will forever have encounters with the Estonian Thunderfrog. Ever. 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 Every year, sorry. He came to my DVD table at National Pro Wrestling Day, and then we battled. National Pro Wrestling Day. We battled like I've never battled before in a game of N64 No Mercy. And he is a trash talker. Oh, boy, he's a trash talker the whole time. (laughs) And uh, it was it was a it was a blast. It was a good time. I was Kurt Angle representing Pittsburgh. He was Taz. I didn't remember how to do specials or reversals, and he did. <laughs> yep, yep, pretty much. Um, also, hey, Charles, uh, we, we we chatted with the uh, worker ant, wasn't it? Um, yeah, he he's the guy who set up the actual tournament. Yep. Uh, so, uh, yeah, and, and I knew I, I did have some knowledge that, um, that the, the Akai wrestling based games are, are fairly generally popular amongst like a lot of the Chikara crew. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, anyways, uh, right, Matt Amy. Carlins, what'd you learn? Um, geez, I learned a lot. Amy kind of stole my thunder on the bullet club. I did learn that, <clears throat> WWE indeed can ruin anything, including Bullet Club. Um, so, just a word of caution to all the Bailey fans out there. Um, I also learned that the um, the Battle of Atlanta was a thing, and we found the footage. It that. was hidden in someone's basement. Apparently, this is the match that inspired Hell in a Cell. It's just like Hell in a Cell, except there's no Shawn Michaels, and it's not quite as high flying. <laughs> but um, it's still a lot of fun watching two guys. Basically, it, it, basically they just bash each other's head into the cage for about um, ten or twelve minutes, which is a nice length for a cage match. I learned that about ten to twelve minutes is the perfect time for a cage match because anything longer than that, and you're like, this is ridiculous. This match should be over. They're in a cage. They're killing each other. There you go, sword. There you go. If you're going, if you are in backstage with your indie pals and you're getting ready to do a cage match and someone is talking to you about what you're going to be doing at the 30 minute mark you tell them no 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 no. 10 to 12 minutes anything longer than that you're asking me to go too far you're stretching believability you're in a steel cage i think the the cage matches at cage free didn't go much more than 15 minutes that's great that, that, and that is a testament to them to show that kind of restraint. And believe me, it's, it's extremely effective. They're both bleeding. They're both dead. They're wobbly. They're barely standing up. 12 minutes. That's all it took. Daniel Stevenson in the uh, Facebook learned that Dean Ambrose still sucks. <laughs> he, wow. He's with the earlier hey. conversation, hey. I guess. I'm going to say a nice thing about Dean Ambrose. He's a hell of a promo. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm with you. He's doing a great job as the champion. I'm with you. He's he's carrying it. He's carrying it. He's, yeah, he's Matt's, doing good. Matt's trying to repair his marriage. Get- I'm not trying to repair my marriage. <laughs> I'm trying to repair the credibility of this podcast. That's what I'm trying to do. Oh uh, boy! And uh, uh, with that, I I I'm going to forgo any further what we learned. Uh, Matt, Mike, you have 30 seconds to tell me why we should watch Texas Wrestling on the Hidden Gems Collection on WWE Network. Um, Texas Wrestling is... Now, I'll grant you it's a little slow. It's a lot of head scissors takeovers, a lot of headlocks and stuff like that. Um, but it is real old-school classic wrestling. Um, if, you're a, if you're a fan of people watching, looking at the crowd 
it during the match will engage you for at least half the match because they're all dressed up in their Sunday finest. It's amazing. Um, the announcer they have on it is a very soothing voice, a very uh, good announcing cadence. And this doesn't have the first ever powerbomb, but it has a Luthez powerbomb in it. And if you thought Kevin Nash was dangerous, you ain't seen shit. This is Fez versus things I, Gunkel. Things I love about really old wrestling matches, the crowds that shriek and squeal and wail and like cry and the ring announcers who act like they don't need to be there and they're just too cool for it. It's awesome. Yeah. The ring announcers in, uh, in Texas wrestling is amazing too. They're just like main event, two out of three falls. Here's Joe Schmo. And now the world champion, Luthez. He'll kick his ass, Lou. That's basically the ring announcer right there. <laughs> Well, all right. He's definitely the guy that this is the side gig for everything else that they did, yeah. right? No matter what it was. Guys, yeah, he's it's like been a disc jockey or something. Yeah. It's, it's been a Beautiful. blast. It's been an absolute blast to tech chalk professional wrestling. This weird thing that brings us all together across the country and uh, into arenas and, and, and sports sportatoriums across the country. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Don't forget the armories, Sorg. The armories. I, I don't want to say bingo and the, halls. And, so, and the VFW halls, Sorg. I, I, I want to say bingo halls and VFW halls is so freaking contrived. I can't remember the last time I was in a VFW for a wrestling show. I can tell you when I was in a storefront of a mall. I can tell you when I was in a, <laughs> com, a community center. I can tell you when I was in a, uh, a basketball court, and then a shitty basketball court, and then another basketball court that was a little nicer than any of the other basketball courts, um, but they covered it up. Uh, but anyways, we think there was a there, we think there was a Sunday service at the building that had Shakara. There was, <laughs> by the way. No, 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 no. There, there, there was. I mean, it was like if if it was, there was like like ten people. But still, like a, a, we just witnessed some things in the parking lot. But like, did I just did and they the just faces and and the, and the looks on these these old women that walked out first were like, what the hell is going on here? Probably not using that term because they're just came from church, but they just like, they, they walked out the side door, stopped. Like they just stopped and looked and, and they, I think one time they tried to go back, but you know, those side doors don't have doors to open up. So they just come out. Oh, so went stuck. out the wrong door. It's all over. Guys, Wrestling Mayhem Show. He's at the E Riz on the Twitter. He's at yes. Mainstream Matt on the Twitter. He's at Mad Mike. NXT Four- Women's Championship Outlook. WrestlingMayhemShow.com. He's at Mad Mike 4883 on the Twitter. Yes, I am, Sorg. Krista Joseph this week, Midweek War. Cannot wait. You guys, send in your Lucha Underground questions. Go right. to WrestlingMayhemShow.com and look at our 65 images and try to tell me that's not Melissa Santos. All right. <laughs> uh, at Mayhem Show, if you have any questions. Um, and also at Amen 2, please. At Amen 2. Yes. Well, I'm getting to that. Uh, uh, Midweek yeah. War is Thursday evening, um, about 10, 11-ish or so p.m. Eastern time. Look for uh, look at for Mayhem it. Show. We're working that out right now. At Mayhem <laughs> Show. I just got a tweet. At Mayhem Show and Wrestling Mayhem Show YouTube for information on when that stream goes live. At Amen 2, please, at AspireProWrestling.com. Thanks so much, everybody, and for joining us. And Raising the Bar. Raising the Bar that I may or may not should have answered or uh, 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 mentioned. I don't know. We'll find out. Either way, it looks like a tremendous show. We'll look it up. Raising the Bar, bar 3. Uh, mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. You guys are cool.